हेलो गाइस हाउ आर यू आई एम हरदीप सिंह वेलकम बैक टू योर ओन यूट्यूब चैनल आल्स अपडेट्स एंड रीसेंट एग्जाम्स फॉर मोर अपडेट्स रिलेटेड टू रीसेंट आल्स एग्जाम राइटिंग दस टॉपिक्स लिस्टनिंग रीडिंग प्रैक्टिस टेस्ट एंड स्पीकिंग क्यू कैट गेस्ट वर्क प्लीज गाइस पार्टिसिपेट इन एवरी डे लिस्टनिंग एंड रीडिंग प्रैक्टिस टेस्ट टू अचीव योर डिजायर बैंड स्कोर इन योर एक्चुअल आल्स एग्जाम Please hit the like and subscribe button. Press the bell icon for the upcoming notifications. Don't forget like, subscribe and share my YouTube channel and my Facebook page Alts updates and recent exams. Part 1. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 4. I've lost two credit cards. One is a Visa, the other is a Mastercard. What can I do? Don't worry. What's your name, please? My name is Ronald Howard. Howard, H O W A R D. Do you know the numbers of the lost cards, sir? Yes. I wrote them down here. The Visa is number 6091 1313 9789 0231 and the mastercard is number 72286718721752059 Do you still remember the expiration date of the cards? Yes. The visa expires in November 2014 and the mastercard in January 2015. Thank you, sir. Could you show me your ID card? Here you are. Thank you. Please come by the office on Wednesday so that we can issue two new cards. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 5 to 10. Could you show me the menu please? Here you are sir. Will you dine à la carte or the table d'hôte? I think the table d'hôte will do very well for me. Does it include an appetizer, soup and so forth? Yes sir. The table d'hôte includes an appetizer, soup, salad, choice of dessert, tea or coffee. Is there any particular dish you would recommend? The roast duck is very good tonight. And we also have several special chicken dishes if you like chicken. Okay. I'll take the roast duck and some veal. Do you want to drink something? A bottle of beer. Will you order your desserts now? Apple pie, ice cream, or cakes? Apple pie, please, and a cup of coffee. Okay. Wait a minute. I'll bring you the appetizer right away. I've got a reservation through my secretary. My name is Reed. R E A D E Just a minute please. Yes, you've got a reservation. A single room for 3 days. The room number is 1201. Here is the key. Thank you. Could you show me your passport? Your passport number? Its number is J D A 2151623. How many pieces of luggage do you have? Just these 3. two suitcases and one bag. Okay. Please sign the register here and the porter will take your luggage to your room. Here is the register. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I hope you'll enjoy your stay here. That is the end of part 1. You now have half a minute to check your answers.
Now turns to part two. You will hear a human resources manager talking about her company's work-life balance policy. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 15. In our company, we believe that our employees are more productive, you know, they work better if they're happy. Naturally, we have to make sure the company makes a profit, but at the same time, we need to think about the physical and mental health of our employees. We do understand that they aren't just working machines, so we have a policy of helping them find a fair balance between their work and their private lives what we call a work-life balance. We do this in several ways. Firstly, we have a family-friendly policy, so parents can look after their children when they're very young. For example, sometimes they need to work flexible hours, you know, times that aren't fixed. Other times, parents have to work part-time, and quite a lot work from home. Another example of our family-friendly policy is our generous maternity leave package. In our company, we allow women who've had a baby to take a whole year off work after the baby's born. And of course, while they're away, their jobs are protected. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 16 to 20. Because we want our employees to be happy, we carried out a survey recently to find out which working patterns are really most popular. In general, our staff prefer to work at the office. In fact, nearly half come in during regular office hours, you know, from nine to five. Anyway, we also asked about part-time work, working from home, and another option, job sharing. Job sharing is a kind of part-time work where two people share the responsibilities for one full-time job. Anyway, we found that only 5% of our staff wanted to share a job, so it's not very popular on the whole. But when it comes to working part-time, we were surprised to find that 27% of our employees would actually prefer it. That's a very high number, really, over a quarter of the staff. And then it was interesting to see that quite a lot of our staff, 20% in fact, would like to work from home. I'd like to give you an example of the kind of person who benefits most from our family-friendly policy. Sally is one of our assistants in accounting who has two small children. Sally's husband travels abroad a lot, so she has to look after the children on her own most of the time. Both the children go to a nursery early in the morning. So we've agreed that Sally can come in at 8 o'clock after she leaves the children. At lunchtime, Sally's sister picks the children up from the nursery. But she has to go to work herself at 3 o'clock. So Sally leaves the office at 2 to collect the children from her sisters. And she makes up the extra time by finishing her work at home. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers.
Now turns to part three. You will hear a conversation between the advisor and an overseas student. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 30. Good afternoon. How can I help you? Good afternoon. My name is Helena Schwartz. I have an appointment at three. Ah, yes. Come in. Please take a seat. Now, what can I do for you? Well, I need some advice about my studies. I'm a foreign student from Germany, and, well, I heard that this is the place to come. It certainly is. So, what kind of problems are you having? It's quite normal for students to meet problems particularly overseas students who might not be familiar with the British way of life or education system. Well, my first problem is the workload. That's a common problem, even with British students. It seems to me that the biggest difference between university and secondary school is that university students have to do a lot of work on their own, and it's sometimes useful to get advice on how to take control of your time and work effectively. You're right. The obvious thing to do is to make a schedule and stick to it. Bear in mind that there is enough time to do the work and enough time for extracurricular activities. You mean that I shouldn't overload myself? Right. But moreover, be careful to spread your work out over the weeks and months. Don't do anything for a while, then get worried because you have little time to get assignments finished. Yes, that's clear. We get a lot of students coming to us with that problem, so we've produced a leaflet about it. You should have received one during orientation, but sometimes... Well, here you are. Thank you. I'll read it carefully later. OK. And feel free to come back if you have any questions about it. OK. My second problem is with research. Are you going to complain that the library isn't open at the weekends? How did you guess? We get so many students complaining about that. We're trying to get that changed, but, well, to be honest, the library staff already work long shifts, and unless we can get extra staff, the library has to remain closed at the weekends. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions. I understand, but... I know. It makes organising your time even more important. Make sure that you get all the books you need from the library before the weekend. Then devote some of your weekend time to making notes from the books at the weekend. The problem is that I'm easily distracted when I'm working at home rather than in the library. Well, an alternative strategy is to work longer hours during the week when the library is open and do no work at all at the weekends. Sometimes it's very useful to forget about studies for a day or two each week. Yes, that might be better for me. I can concentrate on my work in the library and then leave the weekends free. Also, I have some problems with my essay assignments. Could you have a look at these and tell me what you think? Certainly. Uh, I see. Well, even if you plan your writing carefully, this can come to nothing if the assignment doesn't actually answer the question. That really is the most important thing to remember. You must read the question extremely carefully and give it a great deal of thought before you even start planning or writing your first draft. It's also essential to check your work for errors. Everybody makes them, and they can influence the professor marking the work. So always take time at the end to check what you have written. Many overseas students ask a British student to check their work for them. 
I have a short list of people who will do this for a small fee if you'd like it. That's okay. I have several British friends. I'm sure I can bribe them to check my grammar and spelling. Good. Anything else? Yes, there is. I find it hard to keep up sometimes in lectures. Do you have any tips for me? I was thinking of recording them using an MP3 player. Then I can listen to it again afterwards and. Well, a lot of people find them useful, but some people point out that you might never actually have time to listen to the recording again. Something else you could try is checking your notes with a friend after the lecture. Go for a coffee or something. Yes, that's a good idea. Thanks. Thank you very much for your help. That's what I'm here for. That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part four. You will hear a monologue on the subject of volunteer work in Africa. First, you have some time to look at questions thirty-one to forty. Good morning, everybody. I'm Jane Winter, and I'm here to tell you a little about the possibility of volunteer work in Africa. If you're looking for volunteer work in Africa, there are plenty of opportunities available. Let's look at the different types of volunteer opportunities available in Africa. What to expect when volunteering in Africa, and stories from volunteers who have worked in Africa. Volunteering means something different to almost every organisation you come across. Some agencies will cover your flight and cost of living while you are working, and some are true volunteer projects and expect you to cover all costs for the privilege of the experience. If you are looking for a more meaningful way to spend a few months in Africa than simply travelling around. Volunteering is a wonderful way to spend your time. Most jobs that last less than a year or so are going to be the ones you have to pay for. Jobs that require a commitment of more than a year will often offer a basic stipend to cover some of your costs. Whether you get paid and how much you get paid will also depend on your skills and how much they are in demand. Most paid volunteer opportunities in Africa. Are available to those who have a university education and/or a practical skill. Engineers, doctors, nurses, environmentalists, emergency relief personnel, and teachers are among the most asked for by volunteer agencies. If an organisation doesn't require you to have specific skills, then you will usually have to pay your own expenses as a volunteer. In general, most organisations working in Africa try and recruit as many local people as possible, rather than foreigners, since the project should continue long after you have returned home. So don't take it personally if your intention to help people in Africa is rejected. It may just be that a local person is better suited to the job. What should you expect when you volunteer to work in Africa? Conditions are usually basic. Most volunteer opportunities take place in rural areas, where you may not have ready access to running water and electricity. Housing can be very basic, and you will likely be staying with local families. A word about cultural adaptability. As in most countries in the world, rural communities are usually more traditional than urban centres. As you will be working closely with the local population, 
You will have to dress and behave in accordance with what is acceptable locally. The general pace of life and work is much slower than in the West. Don't expect any organization to run efficiently and without glitches. Getting sick can be a problem. If you're spending more than just a few weeks in Africa, especially sub Saharan Africa, your chances of getting malaria or bilharzia will also increase. Make sure you take all the medicine and precautions you need. The organizations you work with should brief you about health issues. And don't forget that local nurses and doctors will have plenty of experience with these common afflictions, probably more than your doctor at home. Initially, you may also have some problems getting used to different food and water. Anyone who has volunteered in Africa will probably tell you that the biggest impact their project had was not on the community but on themselves. Spending time immersed in another culture will change the way you look at life and is part of the appeal of volunteering. Before you decide to volunteer in Africa, you may be interested to learn what the typical experiences are of people already in the field. Later, we'll look at a selection of volunteer stories and experiences from Africa. There are many volunteers and travelers who keep online diaries of their experiences. These contain some excellent tips about working, traveling, and living in Africa. Before that, just a quick word about work permits in Africa. Many people who travel around Africa may wish to stay and work. But just as in Europe or the US, every African country will require you to get an official work permit. In most cases, these laws exist to stop foreigners getting jobs that local people may be qualified for. Unemployment is bad enough throughout Africa, so don't take a job that a local person could do. Now, let's look at a few people's experiences. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers. So guys, don't forget like, subscribe and share my YouTube channel and my Facebook page. I'll update some recent exams for more updates related to recent IELTS exam writing as topics, listening, reading, practice test and speaking, you cut guesswork. Please guys participate in everyday new IELTS listening and reading practice tests to achieve your desired band score in your actual IELTS exam. For more IELTS material, visit my official website www.ielsupdatesandrecentexams.com The link is given below in the description. If you need PDF files of latest IELTS material, then please join my telegram channel. So guys, please write your score below the comment section. Again, thanks for listening. God bless you all guys. Stay tuned. Stay safe.